Today, we're going to dive in and see how shocks work. At their core, shocks are simply about giving you comfort and helping you maintain control of your vehicle or bike. They do this by controlling the way oil flows inside the shock. The main piston and base valve are the two primary ways that oil flow is controlled inside a shock. This control of the shock and vehicle is called damping. Inside a shock, the resistance that the oil experiences while moving through the main piston and base valve is called damping force. When the oil moves relative to the main piston and the base valve, the damping force converts the motion of the shaft into heat inside the shock during compression and rebound. Converting kinetic energy into thermal energy slows down and controls the movement of your vehicle, which gives you comfort. As the shock continues to compress and rebound, the oil's temperature rises. This is why it's important for the shock to also be able to dissipate the converted thermal energy through the shock body and into the atmosphere. Fox specifically applies materials like aluminum throughout the product line to allow for efficient heat transfer to keep shock temperatures as low as possible in extreme conditions. The valving assembly on the main piston is the main source of damping force for oil flow control. One side of the main piston will control oil flow during compression, and the other side will control oil flow during rebound. The main piston assembly is made up of two things, the piston and valving shims. The piston has holes drilled or formed into it that allow oil to flow. These are called ports. When it's just the piston, oil flows pretty easily through the ports with very little damping force. The valving shims are thin metal discs that are used on both sides of the piston to cover the ports. They provide more damping force to oil flow during compression and rebound. You can change the amount of damping force that the valving shims provide in a number of ways. A few examples being diameter, thickness, and amount. During compression, as the main piston is pushed into the shock, oil flows around the rebound valve stack, through the compression ports, and bends the compression valve stack as it exits the ports. During rebound, as the main piston is pulled back to the other end of the shock, oil flows around the compression valve stack, through the rebound ports, and bends the rebound valve stack as it exits the ports. But not all of the oil flows through the main piston during compression and rebound. Some of it is displaced. During compression, the shaft entering the shock body consumes space previously occupied by the oil. To accommodate the displaced oil volume, there is a gas chamber within the shock that is able to compress. During rebound, the gas expands as the oil reoccupies the space that the shaft once consumed. The gas and oil are separated by a solid internal floating piston. The IFP allows the shock to consistently provide damping force to maintain comfort and control. In shocks like the Performance 2.0 or the Float DPS, the IFP will be located in the shock body because these shocks do not have a reservoir like a piggyback style shock. However, in both forms of shocks, the IFP and gas chamber serve the same purpose. It's important to keep the gas and the oil divided to avoid frothing or foaming. Froth and foam do not provide the same amount of damping force as the oil. This inconsistency in damping force can make your ride uncomfortable and less controlled. To control the flow of the displaced oil that does not flow through the main piston, many shocks with piggyback or remote reservoirs use base valves to apply damping force and further control the movement of the shock shaft. In most cases, base valves will only control compression oil flow, with the exception being Fox's X2 technology that allows independent adjustment of both compression and rebound. Base valves will commonly have adjusters that allow you to modify the amount of damping force provided. 
These adjusters are typically described in terms of low speed and high speed. Low speed and high speed actually don't refer to the speed of your vehicle or bike. They refer to how fast the shock shaft is moving. In a future video, we'll dive deeper into explaining how base valves work in addition to why, when, and how to adjust them. Depending on the application, shocks will use various amounts of damping force to control the movements of your vehicle or bike. The right amount of damping force is dependent on a number of factors. Thanks for taking the time to join us today to learn more about how shocks work. Knowing how a shock works is integral to better understand how to adjust it. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, you can click subscribe, follow us on social media, or join us on the web at foxacademy.ridefox.com.